Welcome to episode 8 of The Unemployed Journeyman with AS Monaco in the French Ligue 1. And in today's episode, we have a second leg of our quarter-final tie against Standard Liège in the Europa League. And then we get a second crack of the whip at home against PSG. They're only 12 or so points ahead of us in the league. <laughs> Welcome to the video, folks, and let's have a look at what's happened since you last with us. It's been a bit of a roller coaster ride, I'm not going to lie. In the last episode, we had Bordeaux at home and Raul San Sebastian in the round of 16 Europa League second leg. Both two games, two wins. The previous episode was also two games, two wins. I think we're due a defeat on camera, and I think that's coming in at least the last of today's games. But since the game against San Sebastian, we then played Lille away from home and we were pretty much outplayed in that game. A 2-0 defeat. We weren't particularly good. Verbruggen had a bit of a nightmare. This has become a bit of a theme in the running few games. Levi was a 6.1. Vanderson a 6.2. Just all round, we weren't particularly good against Lille. Then we played Marseille and lost 1-0 against them. Now, to put it into some perspective... Lille was sixth, Marseille were fourth when we were playing them. They beat us, Isaac Romero, Romero go after 24 minutes. And yeah, again, we weren't particularly, Levi 6.2, that's two poor games in a row for him. Bart Verbruggen was a lot better and actually stopped it from being more than just 1-0. Then we played against Lons and a 5-4 win against Lons, in which is probably the most roller coaster match I've played in or managed in, I should say, in FM24. We took the lead through Erez Levi on six minutes before Hannibal and Mark Gouy put Len Lons 2-1 uh, up. sorry, And then in the 45th plus one minute, Vanderson equalised to make it 2-2. And a minute later, Levi getting a goal to make it 3-2 to us. Three minutes into the second half, Andre Santos then made it 4-2 before he then made it 5-2 on 66 minutes. At this point, I'm thinking, OK, lovely, we're taking control of the game, we're winning the match, no problem at all. And against, I think, a fourth-place Lons, that was a good result. But then the 91st minute, David Pereira da Costa making it 5-3 before a use of Fafano own goal two minutes later in the 93rd minute. Bearing in mind, there's five minutes of time to be added on. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, it's going to be 5-5. It ended up being 6 and a half minutes added on before the referee eventually blew the final whistle. But yeah, we actually have a look at the stats for the game. They had three shots on target and scored four goals. I mean, that, that is just mental. We had 12 shots on target, 22 shots in total. Our XG, 3.33. We overperformed their XG, but their XG, 0 0.88, and they got four goals. I mean, that is probably the biggest overperformance of an XG I've seen in my life. We dominated possession. We were easily the better team, but thanks to these two goals here, it made it look a lot closer than what it really had any right to be. And then we play Standard Liège in the first leg at home and a 5-2 win in this game. And again, similar type of thing that Levi on two minutes made it 1-0. Then Andre Santos made it 2-0. Then Barracina made it 3-0. At this point, I'm thinking, OK, we're going to win this 5-6-0. It's going to be very comfortable. The second leg is going to be pretty much worthless but then they made it 3-1 then we made it 4-1 then they made it 4-2 and Erez Levi managed to make it 5-2 in the 87th minute again Bart for Brugge was 6.2 against Lons he was on 6.1 I think it was yeah 6.1 and he's not been in particularly good form but we got the win against Standard Liège 5-2 we take that lead into the second leg bearing in mind though they have got two away goals I'm a bit cautious about that then we played FC Nantes in the league away from home. A 4-1 win, a very comfortable 4-1 win. Navarro over penalty on the third minute. Erez Levi, who is now the league's top goal scorer, with two goals, one in the 13th, one in the 18th minute, and Nahul Cordova on the 47th minute. By the way, Cordova, bear in mind, we got this guy on a free transfer. He's now got a valuation of up to 74 million. He's a wonder kid. He's got the potential to be a five-star player. And talking of Wonder Kids, I'm going to put a screenshot on screen now where we've got this guy and Erez Levy, or Levi in the top 50 Wonder Kids in the world. And Erez Levi is actually the number one Wonder Kid in the world. 
So we've got the best wonder kid in world football at AS Monaco, scoring goals for fun for us up top. So yeah, absolutely delighted. That brings us to today's video where we've got standardly aged the second leg of that. It should be a comfortable routine victory for us, being 5-2 up already. And then we've got PSG, the team that's top of Ligue 1. If we have a look at Ligue 1, we have had it confirmed that we will be playing Champions League football next season. So we've achieved the top four finish that the board wanted. We are 12 points behind. I mean, even if we win today and go, what, nine points behind them, we're not winning the league. You know, there's only five games left anyway. They're still unbeaten. What does give me hope is the fact that they're away from home today. And the three games that they've drawn have all been nil-nil away from home. Bordeaux, Marseille and Nice. Marseille and Nice just below us up here. So that gives me a, a tiny little sliver of hope that we might actually be able to get something out of Monaco, out of PSG in this game. In terms of finances, our budgets were set. Wage budget stayed the same. Transfer budget stayed the same. It has gone down. It was 102 million. I'll get to why it's gone down to 81 million at the moment. I mean, you've probably guessed already. We've signed a player ready for the start of next season. That's why that's been reduced by 20 million. 64.7 million in the bank. We're looking very, very good in that. In terms of dynamics, we, I'm just ignoring all this, basically. Cohesion is good. Cover atmosphere is very good. Managerial support is also good. If we go into the transfer side of thing. I don't know why this is not showing me my future transfers. It's getting rather frustrating. But you already know about Giannis Katagas, the defender that can play anywhere across the back. We've also agreed a £50 million signing for 18-year-old Antoine Marie from Nantes. He is a wonder kid goalkeeper. He's, our scout reports love him. He's three-star current ability with four-and-a-half to five-star potential. He wants to come in as a first choice goalkeeper he's probably not going to be first choice if we're being completely honest my ambition for next season is that Verbruggen remains our number one and he sits on the bench basically and will play in the Champions League for us we're giving his game time that way that and the French League Cup so yeah he's coming in for 50 million pounds it's 21 million up front then I think it's something like 20 million in installments and then there's another 8 million or something for after he's played 50 games, something like that, which takes him up to 50 million. So yeah, two bits of transfer business already done for next season. I love making an early start on that. In the meantime, let's get over to the match day centre for the game against Standard Liège. Okie dokie, here we go. The game against Standard Liège, like I say, five to up from the first leg. This should be a routine game, but you know what we can be like. For Bruggen in goal, Enrique left back, Espinosa right back, Barashina and Vandenberg in the centre of defence. Fafana, Musa and Santos in the centre of midfield. Ruiz and Vanderson out wide with Levi, of course, up top. What would we do without Levi this season? Absolutely sensational. He has been an absolute revelation. And let's get into the game then against Stanley Age. Hopefully we can just be calm with this game. You know, let's not go conceding three goals in the first half and it's suddenly they're leading on away goals or anything stupid like that. Let's just let's just see the game out. Hopefully pick up a win. That would be nice. But it's a very low-key start to the game, which I'm fine with. Only one shot at goal, and that's for them. No shots on target. We are dominating possession. Right, here's the first highlight in the 29th minute. It starts off with standard Liège. They are the home team as well, so they do have home advantage, of course. They go back to their goalkeeper, Radu, He's then bringing it forward with his central defender. They go out to the right-hand side. We win it back for Abel Ruiz. That's good play from Ruiz. He gets it back from Barashina. Levi to Enrique. Fafana, who's on a yellow card. Here's Vandenberg. Espinosa, the winner of this match, by the way, or the winner of this tie, I should say, will play either Brighton or Tottenham in the semi-finals. I'm assuming it's going to be Tottenham. I don't know what the score was. In the first leg, I never checked it. But this is going to be 1-0, isn't it? There you go, 1-0. We can't just see things out, can we? We can't just... Oh, we always have to make life difficult on ourselves. Now, they only need two more goals. And they, they will go through... Does the away goal will count in Europa League? We might have to check it. I mean, I, I haven't checked it because I didn't think it was going to be an issue. I don't think there is such thing as away goals 
in UEFA European competitions anymore. Three minutes of time to be out. We've not even had a shot on target. That has been a really... I mean, we've not been great. And I'm going to thrash my arms and it's absolutely unacceptable. Can we just do the job? Do we have to make life difficult on me? I swear, I mean, Espinosa's having a nightmare. Right, we have a corner. Enrique will take, goes towards the back post. Oh, thought that was going to be an equaliser for us. At least we've had a couple of shots on target at the start of this second half. Played just over an hour. They now have the highlight. If they score now, I'm going to really start panicking. If Bruggen comes out and takes the catch and calms things down, gives it to Vandenberg, is Andre Santos to Musa, to Fafana. A whole of their midfield is very deep. Vanderson now puts it out to the left-hand side for Enrique. I, mean, I don't know why he's going to go on his own. He, he's not known for scoring goals. He should have tried passing it to someone. Right, we're going to make a substitution or two because we're just... Right, Espinosa's going to have to come off. He's on a yellow... I think that's even now suspended for the next game as well. And I think Vandenberg is one yellow card away. But he's actually having a, probably the best game out of all of our players. Right, Vanderson could come off for Cordoba as well. And let's see if we can at least try and get a goal back. Not that we need goals, but just if they score one more goal, then it is going to make a very, very nervy end to this game. Right, Fafana can come off. We've dropped Santos back into there. And Fafana can come off for Puxtas. And I think we bring Abel Ruiz off and Robert Navarro can come on. It's been a disappointing performance so far, I've really got to say. Right, Enrique to Barashina with a throw. We go back to Verbruggen. He finds Vandenberg. To Puxtas. Sardella now down this right-hand side. He's marching his way forward. He can cross a ball and he has crossed it. We couldn't get to the ball first, but Puxtas now has it to Musa. Out to Enrique. Don't shoot yourself. Navarro, Enrique, Musa, Cordoba. Cordoba. Oh, I thought Cordoba was going to get an equaliser. Right, we have a throw in again over on the right hand side. Sardella would take it to Cordoba and back to Sardella. Back to Cordoba. He's in the box. He gets tackled, but Puxtas has put it in. It is the equaliser. It's 1-1 one, one on the night. My heart rate can calm. It's 6-3 on aggregate. 82 minutes into the match. And I think what we're going to do is make one more substitution. Vandenberg, who I don't believe has had a yellow card yet. No, he hasn't. So he can come off and O'Dulls can come on for him. Because I'm sure he's one yellow card away from the suspension. And it looks like we are going to see the game out. It's a 1-1 draw. So it does bring a little winning run on camera to, the, to an end. And most likely means we're not going to win a game in today's episode. Yep. Yeah, okay, fine. Say good positive things to them. We are into the semi-final. Tottenham are out. We've got Brighton in the next round. Brighton have beaten them 2-0 in the first leg. And then 2-1 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Very imaginative name that is so we will play Brighton in the semi-finals of the Europa League that is quite the turn up because I was adamant we was going to be playing Tottenham even to the point there you go it's Brighton in the Europa League yeah I was adamant we was going to be playing Tottenham because I said to myself well there you go that's a Europa League run come to an end I mean how are Brighton doing 13th in the in the Premier League what's the Premier League table look like Oh, look at that. Arsenal are top. Liverpool second. Man City third. Chelsea fourth. Villa fifth. Man United overperforming. They're in sixth. Wolves do really well. But Tottenham in 12th. Brighton, I mean, neither of them are actually doing particularly well this season. So, I would say we actually stand a chance of getting through to the final of the Europa League where we play either Villarreal or Lazio. Right, let's move into the game against PSG and I'll meet you over at the Matchday Centre. <laughs> Here we are then for the second match of today's episode, home against PSG. Nice won their game yesterday, so they moved to within three points of us. There is every possibility they're going to end up catching us because we still got Nice to play as well this season. 
We've also got to play Toulouse that are eighth. Now, I do want to just quickly show you a quick news story because we've had an email about a tycoon takeover. Will you please click in there? And it says here, UEFA Europa League semi-finalist AS Monaco could soon be the subject of a takeover bid amid rumours that current chairman Dimitri Ribolov, something like that, Dimitri, is looking to leave the club. RMC Sport, presumably they're a very reputable outlet, is reporting that a mystery foreign tycoon is looking to complete a buyout of the club and invest large sums of money in new players and facilities. We could be the subject of a tycoon takeover. We probably won't be, but let's live in dreamland at the moment because investing large sums of money into the club would be amazing. Right, let's get into the game. It's enough dreaming for now. And the team we're going to go with today, we have made one change because Fafana's got a slight injury. He's back to training in a couple of days. So Santos drops back into the anchor role with Puxtas coming in to midfield. I'm just debating about whether I play Cordoba or Vanderson. I'm going to stick with Vanderson because technically he is... Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go with Cordoba. Right, Cordoba's there. So Verbruggen in goal, Enrique left back, Espinosa right back, Barracina and Vandenberg in the centre of defence. Andre Santos, Musa, and Puxtas in the midfield with Abel Ruiz and Cordova out wide, Levi up top. So let's get into today's game. I have got a little bit of a belief that we could get something against PSG. It's not much of a belief, I'll grant you that. But there is a little bit there that makes me think potentially we could get something. Like I said, we look at their... Where's the league table? There it is. We look at the three games they've dropped points in all season in the league. They've all been away from home. Nice and Marseille are among the three teams that they've dropped points against. So there is, there is that little bit of hope there. The fact that, I don't know if it's been confirmed they've won the league yet. I don't think I think that it could get confirmed today actually against us. But they're obviously going to win the league. Espinosa gets the ball into the box and it's a goal from Abel Ruiz. He's seventh of the season. He's not been as clinical this season as I was hoping he would be. But he's got the goal. It's 1-0 to Monaco in the 18th minute. I think we took the lead the first time we played them at the Parc de Princes, didn't we? And we end up losing 2-1 in that game. Right, ball into the box from a corner. Oh, they've now got it. It's with Nuno Mendes. Well played, Puxtas. Wins it back. Gives it to Vandenberg. Goes back to Verbruggen. Barracina to Puxtas. Puxtas then loses it after he's done so well to win it back. Oh, they're free. Vinicius Junior. It's 1 1. Well, at least our lead lasted for seven minutes in this game. I think it lasted about two minutes in the previous game. I think the idea if you want to beat PSG, you have to score in like the 98th minute of the game. So there's not enough time to anger them into getting a goal back. But here's Zay Emery. Ball into the box. It's 2-1 already. Kylian Mbappe. I mean, come on. Vinicius Junior. Kylian Mbappe. This is cheating. I mean, I... They've got a corner now. Please don't batter us. I was actually hoping that with our time at Monaco, we might actually be able to topple PSG and win Ligue 1. I don't know how we do, to be quite honest. With the team they've got, it is just ludicrous. When you consider we've got... Our stadium is so tiny. We're not getting any money coming in through gate receipts and things like that. They're now 3-1 up. I mean, can we just go cautious, please? Can we, ju can we just stop conceding goals now? Verbruggen is... I mean, to be fair, this young 18-year-old goalkeeper might end up being my number one next season if Verbruggen doesn't sort himself out. But, oh, so disappointing. It is. I know one of them was unhappy with my team talk, but tough luck. Right, so they are, what, 15 points ahead of us now. It's 12 points going into today's game with 12 points available. So, yeah, they would win the league and potentially lift the trophy at our stadium. I mean, what a kick in the teeth that is. For Bruggen actually making a really good save there. Otherwise, that would have been 4-1. Mendes will take the corner for PSG. We have to just take the beating because when you're playing PSG, you just kind of expect it, don't you? 
But yeah, it's, it's so frustrating. Right, we're going to change some, something in defence because Adul's is going to come in for Vandenberg. I mean, no one in their defence is playing well. I mean, to be fair, Espinosa's not having a bad game. Levi can come off. No, can't well, We'll put Ruiz up top and bring Navarro on for Levi. I don't want him getting too damaged by this. And I think Fernandez can come on for Puxtas, who's not playing particularly well. Oh, just, just leave it, Damo. Just leave it, mate. Oh, this is painful. We had so much hope in the 18th minute when we went 1-0 up through Avil Ruiz. Right, Sardella can come on for Barracina. Why not swap them two over like that? Um, Mahia can come on for Musa. Why not? I mean, they might score another one or two goals. Right, Espinosa with the free kick to Fernandez. Sardella to Santos to Fernandez to Espinosa. We're playing some nice football, but let me just give it away. Because, of course, we do. Zaire Emery, long ball forward, dirty tactics, that is. What's happening here? Red card? A Dawes has been sent off, and I have absolutely no idea why. Other than the fact that Vinicius Junior is a little wimp. I'm not going to bother making any changes. What, what, what's the point? We're not going to win. Oh, this is just getting bad. I mean, at least it's a Dawes that's been sent off and he's not one of our first team players. And Hakimi almost scoring an absolute weldy there. Right, Ref, can you just blow the whistle, please? I don't need these constant highlights. We don't need to lose 6-1. Just let the game play out, blow the whistle and we'll take the 3-1 defeat. That'd be quite enough. Thank you very much. Unless we're going to score, then you carry on with the highlights. Fernandez to Cordova to Espinosa. Goes back to Sardella. Espinosa just gives it away again, doesn't he? It's not like they're even winning the ball back. We're just giving it to them. 4 1, well done. And Bappe with his other goal, with his second goal of the game, I think. Uh, the referee's obviously not going to blow for offside or anything like that because. Uh, it's killing Mbappe and he wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, it's his second goal of the game. Vinicius Junior with two as well. Oh, I, I hate PSG. I hate them with passion. With their foreign money. Oh, just... I mean, it's going to be 5 1 now, isn't it? Ref, seriously, just blow the whistle. We don't need this. Why do you have to put me through hell? Enrique over free kick. Is it the crossbar? And there's a full-time whistle. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to be honourable. I'm going to watch PSG lift. Is that the trophy for winning the league? Oh, that's basically the charity shield, isn't it? Or community shield, whatever it's called. Well, at least have a proper trophy for winning the league. I've got to say, I'm not as motivated now to win the league because that trophy is naff. Sorry if you're a fan of French football. But it just looks like someone's brought a dinner plate along. There you go. We've seen them lift the trophy at our stadium. Another kick in the teeth on top of the fact we've had a red card and we've lost 4-1. But it is what it is. At the end of the day, we've had a season to be proud of. You know, regardless of whether we finish second or third. Because I don't think we're going to finish any lower than second or third. I don't think we can. But... I mean, let's just do the math. They've got five points, uh, five games left, so that's what, 15 points? Six, seven, so yes, we can't finish any lower than third anyway. So that's the League One for PSG. We've been given an absolute battering. And, yeah, we'll just confirm that and don't appeal it. I, I never appeal the bans because all that ever happens is I'll get another, suspend, another game of suspension added onto it. Right, if we have a look at the schedule then... So in tomorrow's episode, I think what we will probably do, we've got Brest next in the league, followed by Toulouse, and then we've got Nice and Havre. So I think what we might do tomorrow is we do Toulouse and Brighton. So we've got the second leg of the semi-final and the league game against Toulouse. Then on Friday's episode, it'll either be Nice and Havre for the last two games, or if we do get through to the final, it will be 
Havre and the Europa League final. So that's the plan for the rest of the week. Sorry I couldn't bring you a win today, folks, but as you can see from the previous game or the games that we've played since the last episode, we have been in pretty dodgy form anyway. I'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully you'll be back to join me. Please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you for the next episode tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you.